Hi there. Hi, grade threes. So I want to continue our reading of Time Jumpers, Stealing the Sword. We read through chapters one, two, and three um, two days ago, and now we're going to continue in chapter four called Stranger Things. Now, we had finished off with the kids had opened the suitcase that they had gotten, and once they opened it, it said that they both gasped. <gasps> So let's carry on with chapter four, Stranger Things. The suitcase is definitely not empty. It is filled with silver colored foam. Chase presses his finger into it. Squishy, but firm. How strange. But the foam is not even the strangest part. The strangest part is what is nestled inside the foam. There are four rows of objects, each one odder than the next. Row one holds an uncooked potato, a doorknob in the shape of a dragon's head, a gold cube, and a black stone beetle with a green hexagon-shaped jewel on its back. Row two gets even more bizarre, a bag of dirt, a white feather, a slim purple candle, and a glass tube. Row three has slots for four more items, but the slots are empty. Row four holds one item only, and it's the oddest of them all. It looks like a cross between a cell phone and a remote control, but instead of numbers, it has multicolored circular buttons on the front, and there is no on-off switch. Ava bounces up and down. Chase, this is this suitcase is by far the coolest thing we've ever found at the flea market. Before Chase can even agree, Ava reaches for the beetle. She always did have a thing for bugs. She frowns. Oh, sorry. Chase pushes the suitcase away from her. Wait, she frowns. Why did you do that? These things look important, Chase says. We should see if Madeline even knows they're in here. Maybe she'd want them back. Fine, Ava, Ava grumbles. As Chase clicks the suitcase closed, they hear angry voices. The shouts are coming from Madeline's booth. Where is it? A tall man in a gravy suit. A gray, <laughs> gravy Gray suit shouts at Madeline. I know you have it. Give me my suitcase. So chapter four, the angry man. Without realizing it, Chase and Ava move a bit closer to each other. The action at the suitcase booth is heating up. Madeline's hands are on her hips. She doesn't look happy. The man keeps shouting, where is my suitcase? Madeline finally shouts back, I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave. But he doesn't leave. Instead, he begins opening suitcases and tossing them aside. What's he doing? Ava whispered. Chase can only guess. Maybe he's checking to see if his suitcase is hidden inside a bigger one. The man shouts again. You don't know who or what you're dealing with. Ava turns to Chase. Do you think he's looking for our suitcase? I hope not, Chase replies, but we should go check. I mean, if it's really his, we should give it back. No way, Ava says. We bought this suitcase fair and square. Actually, Chase points out, we didn't buy it at all. They watch as the man whips out a cell phone and jabs at it angrily. Then he stuffs it back in his pocket and stomps around the booth some more. Chase has seen enough. With one foot, he pushes the suitcase behind the tree. He might not even know, he might not know who the suitcase really belongs to, but he definitely doesn't want this guy to have it. Thank you, Ava whispers. You won't get away with this, the man yells at Madeline. Then he storms away from the booth. 
As soon as he's gone, Madeline turns around. She looks directly at Chase and Ava, and she mouths the word, run. Chapter six, faster. Chase's heart begins to pound. What should they do? He scans the flea market until he spots the tall man again. Oh no, the man is walking back towards the booth. Ava is already on her bike. Come on, she said, let's go. Chase springs into action. He grabs the suitcase and hops on his bike. He doesn't want to risk the man seeing them or the suitcase. They pedal to the top at top speed towards the bike path. Ava crunches, cranes her neck to see if the man has spotted them. And she almost crashes into Chase. Steering with one hand while holding the suitcase with the other is not easy. Chase's bike wobbles as they weave their way through the trees and down toward the playground. After a close call with an evergreen tree, Chase parks his bike next to Ava's. Usually the playground is packed, but he's glad to see it's empty now. He lays the suitcase down. They both reach for the lock. But before either of them can touch it, the suitcase springs open all on its own. Whoa, Ava says wide-eyed. I know this sounds crazy, Chase says, but I think the suitcase is telling us that it's ours. I think so too, Ava says. They stare down at the strange objects. Ava reaches for the beetle again. When Chase tries to stop her, his arm hits the side of the suitcase. The dragon doorknob pops out of its slot and Chase reaches to catch it. As soon as he wraps his fingers around it, the ground begins to rumble and shake. Is, is this an earthquake? Ava calls out, her eyes wild. She quickly shuts the suitcase and grabs the handle. Ava clings to her brother as the ground begins to spin. Or maybe, maybe they're the ones spinning. It's too hard to tell. Faster and faster they spin. Images blur in front of their eyes. Mountains, oceans, cities, and faces. This is no earthquake. Tune in on Friday to hear the rest. Have a great day.